Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I am bringing a right now word that I received from the Lord today. Today has been basically dedicated to receiving several prophetic truths from the Lord Jesus Christ. These are extremely grave and hard hitting words that I am bringing today. And I have a lot to cover. I actually have to make two videos. One relates to, I would call it normal life. So these are things within the human space, within um, real life, things that we can easily understand and relate to. And the other one relates to the supernatural. But the Lord instructed me to start with the one relating to natural. And so the prophecy that I am bringing today is called the rise of Russia and the end of America. This prophecy is going to integrate many prophecies that I have covered in the past. In the Bible, when Moses used to judge the people, the law and the rule that God had given them is that no man should be condemned for any sin or any accusation unless there were at least two or three witnesses to corroborate that the man was indeed guilty of whatever he was accused of. And so this rule was taken extremely seriously and we still adhere or should adhere to this rule in Christianity today. This means that in order order to test the veracity of prophecy. You shouldn't just see it popping up out of nowhere. Yes, a prophecy can be new and groundbreaking, but because God is consistent, God will consistently come to a true prophet, an anointed and called person that he identifies as his own. And what I have noticed with God is that once he gives me a theme, even when I am not expecting it, the Lord will continuously revisit that theme. He will also seamlessly reintegrate past messages and past themes that also relate to what he is talking about in that moment. And he blends it so seamlessly together that I personally am always in awe of how God remembers every single message on the master's voice without fail, even when I cannot. The messages are almost at 400 and these videos are only at nearly 200, but I am working as fast as I can to translate all relevant messages from the blog, which is their home, to the internet. This is a support channel, so you need to understand that I will only be speaking in synopsis in these videos. If you truly want to know with scripture everything that the Lord is saying, then I ask you for your own good to visit the master's voice and, and spend some time reading there when you can. And so the name of today's prophecy is the rise of Russia and the end of America. I received this today, March the 9th, 2022. And the banner scripture is this, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger even them that rejoice in my highness. So the title of the prophecy, the rise of Russia, the end of America should already tell us what we are saying. If you are new to this channel, I recommend that you visit the Russia and China playlist on this channel. I also recommend that you visit the blog and read the almost 20 prophecies that the Lord has given. God could have started anywhere with these messages, but when I started this channel, he told me, Celestial, you will start with Russia and China. You will make all the Russia and China videos first because Russia and China are core to my judgment and punishment of the United States. I've shared in my earlier videos on Russia and China that at the time God was speaking these things to me, nobody was talking about them. I'm not saying that so that I can create a kind of exclusivist doctrine. I'm simply saying it because it was the fact. In the old days, YouTube was very easy to use. You could simply come on and if you had a question or if you were looking for something, you could simply look it up on YouTube. There was barely any censorship then. You could find the most cut clear cut things that you were looking for. But now in this era, it's different. When the Lord first showed me Russia and China, I've never written that video on the blog, but he first showed it to me, I think, at some point in 2014. I had a dream and I've shared that dream in several videos. The synopsis is that I dreamt of Russia here in the United States, boots on the ground type of warfare, and they were swarming the country. 
The scene that the Lord showed me was he placed me in a street and I saw Russian soldiers in the street basically attacking Americans who were panicking unbelievably at that time. I was only there in spirit. So even though I was screaming to the Americans, run, run, screaming, run, save yourselves. Obviously no one could hear me. I saw that they were carrying these I guess you would call it a rifle or whatever gun people use in warfare. And they had a distinctive lightning bolt shaped knife on the end of them. So that may not be what they use now, because I've also had prophecies where I said that the Lord has shown me extremely modern guns that Russia and China have, that they are trading in weapons that America has no idea about. In fact, the Lord said that when they trade these weapons, It is by private invitation only. So they do have, I I wouldn't call it a gun show. They have these private investors meetings where they show off the weaponry that they have. But the Lord said that not a single member of the West is there. So we're talking about your France, your Germany. We're talking about basically the people in the EU. We're talking about the UK and America. He said that nobody in the West knows a thing about the type of weaponry that China and Russia have, and that it is by invitation only, and that they trade these weapons privately among only certain countries. And that is one of the reasons that the Lord has revealed that America will be terribly surprised when Russia comes here because Russia is going to be using the kind of cutting edge brand new stuff that America has no idea about. In one prophecy, the Lord showed me the American air fleet represented by this very old and clunky plane that is known as a Cessna. I think it's the kind of plane that still uses a propeller. I saw an old propeller plane going and then I saw the Russians had these flat black disc like objects that could even, as he has revealed in other prophecies, these planes can fly without being detected by any radar. So Russian planes can fly over the United States airspace and they will only, you will only know, America will only know those planes are there if Russia could, should switch on some kind of switch that will make them visible. But if they do not want to be visible, if they want to be cloaked, I think it is, then they will be cloaked and those planes, some of them can hover and some of them can do flyovers over this nation and not be seen. The Lord also showed that Russia is around in the water. He was asking America, are your borders really secure? And are you really as locked up tight as you think you are? Because your enemy is um, sitting in the water around your coasts and listening to your communications. That prophecy is called the hub. But today the Lord brought a very, and when I say very strong word, I'm talking about the fact that when the Lord gives prophecy to me, it pours into me as a cup. So I feel and hear the voice of the Lord pouring into me as a cup. And sometimes because the Lord is extremely angry, because America has not been taught, the world actually has not been taught the true nature of God, that if we as people, when we observe evil and injustice, we get angry and we feel those things, we think that God does not feel those things because God has been relegated by American pastors mainly and mostly, but also around the world by some pastors who like to serve only sugar. God has been relegated to this Santa type of being who is forced to sit in the love corner. So while we as human beings can get upset when we see injustices happen or when somebody swipes across us in traffic or hurts our child or just does evil that we see and we get angry, God is not allowed to have the same anger because God's job, according to modern Christianity, is to just love at all costs, to love sin, to love the sinner. We have come up with phrases like love the sinner, hate the sin. You cannot find that anywhere in the Bible because God says that if the sinner sins, the soul that sins shall die. So clearly there is a problem in theology where somebody is talking and somebody is lying, but human beings will find out at the end of time who was really talking and who was really lying. And I 
sent here by the Lord can tell you as a sneak preview that the person who is lying is not the Lord. So in the early, um, in the early 2000s, whatever, in 2014, God was speaking to me about this and I went on YouTube and I could not find anybody talking about this. I shared that I only, after much diligent search and after changing my search terms, I found one blonde lady who was reading a series of dreams that she and other people had been having about Russia coming to the United States. And this woman was so reluctant to share these dreams that I shared. She was whispering as if she thought either the FBI or the KGB would burst into her apartment and drag her away. That was the sole person that I could find talking about this. But now, because God is truthful, God is multiplying revelation to his children. However, we should also be warned that God is not speaking to some people, but because we are in the electronic age, it is very easy to just go around cherry picking information that is easily available and then saying that the Lord has revealed it when he actually has not. But here today, God poured heat in my spirit and I will not hold back what he said. These words are hard and I ask all those who are listening, if you have pride, if you have patriot patriotism, if you have anything that is going to cause you to put up this defensive shell over yourself so that you cannot hear what God is saying, then that is your choice. But those who humble themselves will hear the master's voice, not celestial, the master, but the Lord Jesus Christ, who is often referred to as master and rabbi in the scripture. Severity of prophecy has increased for me. I am not saying to this audience everything that I am hearing. I am not sharing with these audience every time that the Lord will say to me, Celestial, go and read, for instance, Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 4. If you want to know what that verse 4 is, it says that God says that he will take Egypt and give them into the hand of a fierce and a cruel king. And I have already shared on this platform exactly who that man is. I have already shared who that man is. That man used to be a president in this country. He is a former leader of the United States. And the Lord has shared in the prophecy entitled, The Man of Sin, that when that man returns, when he arises for a second time in the United States, it will be a time of pain, of suffering, of great persecution, of great testing in this nation, a time that will try the hearts of all who reside here and will prove once and for all who truly are God's people and who are the people who will accede to the beast. To accede simply means to leave the original point that you once stood and cross and join something else. So today it is about Russia, the rise and the power of Russia, the times that are coming involving the nation of Russia and the fall and eventual breakage and eventual removal of the nation that is known as the United States. I have left navigable shores of the prophetic word. The kinds of things that the Lord is revealing to me now are things whereby you will listen and the Holy Spirit in you will discern who is speaking to you or you will not be able to tolerate the words that are coming forth, and that is your own decision. You cast them away, you keep them, you find them interesting and put them in a little cookie jar for later. Whatever listeners do with these words, it is completely up to you, but I know that what God has entrusted to me will come out exactly as he has said. These are the words of the Lord that I received this morning at around 11 a.m., I have commanded my holy ones for my vengeance, for my righteous weapons of war. They are righteous when they destroy you, for you are a nation that loves to do evil. You have not departed evil since I warned you long ago. Now your destruction will come upon you and will not be turned back. From this time forward, wars are determined. Wars will not stop until the final time of the evil one, where they will be stopped only for a season as a trial and a deception to further the agenda of the beast. Wars are determined upon you, America. Economic and trade warfare, as well as physical wars, will come against you. You are spread too thin, and that will be your downfall. 
I will read ser several prophecies to support what I'm reading from the tablet. So I'm going to read from the word of God. I'm going to read from the notes the Lord gave me as I was making this video. And I'm also going to read the scripture. So stay with me and um, be patient. If this video goes long, it is important and it needs to be made and it also needs to be heard and understood. So I'm reading from the book of Jeremiah right now. And these are scriptures that I used to get a lot when I was putting up the Russia prophecies. God would always have me going back. When I'm working in a certain area of prophecy, the Lord will continually keep speaking speaking certain verses. And I have to tell you, it is almost like a pick. It is like a woodpecker hitting on a tree, or it is like an ice pick. And it will continue hitting on my heart so that I can understand that what is being said to me is serious. What is being said to me is permanent. What is being said to me is sure to come so that I can understand that I am not just putting up fluffy words or putting up words of imagination, but I am putting up the actual word of the Lord out of his book for all things that were shall be again. This is what it says in Ecclesiastes chapter, I think it's chapter one, the thing that was will be again. And so out of Jeremiah chapter one and verses 14 on down, 13, I will read. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come and each one will set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls all around and against all the cities of Judah. Verse, verse 16, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and they have worshiped the works of their own hands. And these words are repeated in this prophecy. So as we go along, I pray that even if you need to watch this video back, you will do so, so that you can understand what the Lord is saying. The second passage I'm going to read is from Isaiah chapter 13 and verse three. This is the banner scripture for this message. I have commanded my sanctified ones I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, those who rejoice at my exaltation. And so the Lord is saying here, not that the nation of Russia is perfect. God alone is perfect and God will not excuse any evil that a country does. But God has often said in these messages that Russia is far more holy and far more righteous and far more moral than the United States. That Russia is a country that practices far more righteousness than the unrighteous, unholy, unstopped and unstoppable immorality that pra that is practiced here in America. And he calls them his righteous weapons of war and said that when they are destroying this nation, they are acting righteously. Now in the Bible, when nations depart from the Lord, they are always destroyed from their enemies. This is a tried and tested tenet of Bible prophecy. If you don't know Bible prophecy, you can find it in the middle of the Bible. If you invest the time and read those books, you will understand that God is very much a person of structure and a person who keeps and adheres to his own rules at all times. Any nation that sins is destroyed. It doesn't matter that we are in the age of online TV and online shopping. Nothing has changed since the ancient days. When kingdoms sin, they first slide down in relevance, and then they slide down in power, and then they slide down in influence, and they get soft on the inside because of the sin, the rot that they are carrying on the inside, until eventually they are dismissed in heaven. Once you are dismissed in heaven, you are of no more use to the Lord. You have become salt that is no longer salty. God can no longer use you to carry out righteousness in the earth. And the only end, as Jesus said in the book of Matthew, for salt that is no longer salty is to cast it away so that people can trample it under their feet. In the same way, 
because America has lost the salt of the gospel that once rang out in her and made her an example to all nations, a bright shining light to all who would know Christ. God has no use for this nation. So even though the nation talks about itself and says, we're the best and we're the greatest and we're the biggest and we're the strongest in heaven, the Lord says, depart from me, thou unclean, depart from me, thou who practice abominable wicked in my sight. Once God is not backing a nation, it will find that here on earth, it will continue to make the wrong move. You can find this in the prophecy ascendancy. God says that America will continue making terrible mistakes in the international space. This is not faux pas where you make perhaps a wrong comment here or there. America will make terrible missteps terrible wrong moves that will see her building up many, many enemies. And now we come to what God says from this time forward, wars are determined. So I saw two things, not saw as in pictures, but just saw as in impressions God put upon my heart. Russia will greatly expand from this time forward that we have observed in the international space. Russia is not going to cease growing its influence. Russia is not going to cease expanding. Russia is not going to cease um, walking about to and fro in the earth, building up friends and allies on one side and taking territory for herself. There is a prophecy on the master's voice. I think it's just called Russia. It says Russia in something. But in that prophecy, I saw a voice from heaven call a sleeping bear. And the voice said to the bear, arise and consume much flesh. And the bear had three ribs in its mouth. And this shows that Russia will be part of the end times, powerful amalgate beast system, but it will have the right to suck to itself much territory. As the bear in the book of Daniel was told, arise and consume much flesh. Russia will consume much territory. So the Lord says from this time on, wars are determined. And what I saw is not only the expansion, the continued growth and expansion of Russia, but what I saw is that war began to come to America, war in the press, war of words, war in the international space, and eventually physical wars. The Lord said that America will begin to get into international disputes and international spats with her neighbors, with her allies, the people that she thinks are her friends or the people that count themselves America's true friends. And she will also begin to get into skirmishes and shouting matches and public arguments with people who do not like her at all. He says that there will be economic and trade warfare in the United States. And I think the prophecy on the blog is called World Politics America. And in that prophecy, I saw China and Russia climbing up very fast. Remember I said that I'm integrating the old prophecies with this new one. I saw China and Russia climbing up very fast, up like a metal pole. Each nation had a pole and they were climbing very fast up their pole, but America kept slipping down her pole and she was not making much progress. I even saw smaller countries, I think it was the Philippines or some small country was going up their pole of dominance, going up their pole of um, expansion, going up their pole of development even faster than the United States was. In that prophecy, the nations were playing tennis, but every time America hit the ball, the umpire yelled against her, fault, fault, fault. And she kept making a lot of false starts and she got very angry because she kept hearing fault. And as she got more and more angry, this of course caused her game to get even worse. So the Lord says that wars are determined against America, economic warfare, trade warfare, and even physical wars will come to this nation. He says that America has spread herself too thin and that will be the reason she will fall. I continue. I have commanded my sanctified ones, the Russians, and they will rise against you in the end days and they will strike you with a fury unbecoming because of all the sins you have committed under heaven, all your sin, all your evil is now due. Your sin and your evil has come due. 
Russia is coming and they are bringing a final solution for America with them. So I was speaking about wars being determined and in the Bible, you can read more about them, about that, where that phrase is coming from. Wars are determined in two Chronicles 16, where King Asa went to the temple, the house of God, and he took all the silver and the gold instruments out of the temple. And he sent it to this king called Ben-Hadad, who was ruling in Damascus of Syria at that time. This act enraged God so much because these are holy objects that David made in previous times and sent it and put them in God's house and said, I am sanctifying a house for my God. Now here, Asa is a descendant of, God, of David's house and he comes and he wants to play nice or get on the good side of a foreign king. And he takes these sacred objects that have been dedicated by Solomon before God's eyes when the temple was finished and dedicated. And he gives them to a foreign king as a gift. And the prophet Hanani comes to Asa and says, for what reason have you done this? Who has helped you win all the wars of your past? Who has always made you victorious against your enemy that you think you would need to take the sacred things of God and give them to this pagan king to try and make a to try and make a pact with him the lord says to you because you have done this from this time forward you will be troubled by wars and this is what god is saying to america and the final war that america will fight and not win will be the rise of russia in the end days because russia god says will strike this country with such a hard blow and the lord has told me to say many times in prophecy, and I repeat it, that when the blows are struck here, do not look at the human hand that struck you. That is his exact phrase. Do not look, America, at the hand, the human hand that strikes you, for this blow comes from me, the Lord. So since 2019, I have been speaking of this, that Russia will invade the United States, that there will be slavery here, now, at the time the Lord gave me this, when I brought this message out, it was met with understandable shock and consternation by the people who used to read the master's voice at that time. Their shock and consternation was understandable. There was no video channel in 2019, so not many people knew about the master's voice then. But in 2019, a lot of people who read the blog struggled with the idea, number one, that slavery could ever come back in our modern times when it is so strongly condemned across the board by everyone. But also, two, people greatly struggled with the idea that such a mighty military nation as the United States could ever be taken into slavery. I understood that this was impossible to their minds. And yet I know that I had heard the Lord and I spoke of the fact that slavery would take place here in America. And I even gave the particular details of the type of slavery. God said to me, Celestial, who's going to waste money on metal shackles for the Americans? They're going to be carried away in plastic. And what I used to see is a barrel pouring down full of zip ties in green, red, black, yellow, white, purple, and I think red, these are the colors of zip ties that I saw. Just sometimes I would be working and I would just see this, this huge barrel pouring out zip ties. And that is one of the particular details the Lord gave me concerning the fact that prophecy, that slavery will be a part of the end times judgment of America. The Lord said that because America kept slaves in this nation and treated them with such cruelty. I have seen things that are not even written in the hum history books. I have seen them in the visions and though I have not shared them because they are extremely distressing, I have seen the nature of things that were done to people here that the Lord has showed me, especially he showed me the devastation that is suffered by husbands as men take their wives and daughters in front of them. And as men were humbled by things that should not be done to men because their bodies were not created for any kind of atrocity like that, I have seen those things. And though I have not shared detail, the Lord showed that because of those things, that is why not only slavery will come here, but extremely excruciating sexual slavery and sexual molestation. And people have asked, will the righteous suffer with the wicked? You have never seen the Lord punish a righteous man. If you want to understand more about that, I think you can read, I think it's Jeremiah chapter 18, 
Jer- Jeremiah chapter 18 is very clear about how punishment is given to righteous and wicked. If one is righteous and walks in righteousness, adhering to the laws of God, then that one can be assured that even when his day comes to meet the Lord in death, he will be given the allotment of a righteous man. But if one walks in righteousness and departs from righteousness and begins to do wickedness, which is what this nation is lawfully and justly accused of by God, then that one can be sure. And Jeremiah 18 makes it clear. The righteousness that you used to do, the preaching the gospel that you used to do, the giving aid to foreign countries and helping them out that you used to do shall not count for you in the day of judgment for you are a wicked one, if you walk at, as a wicked one, you will be judged. But the Lord says, if a man was wicked and did wickedness and practiced abomination and then comes to the knowledge of God's ways and he repents and turns his feet from wickedness and begins to do what is righteous, the Lord says that that man will not be judged. He will not be punished. He will be treated as a righteous one and all his previous wickedness shall not count against him. So to the answer, will the righteous go into the slavery and will the righteous be sexually molested by the Chinese soldiers who I saw will be the drivers of sexual slavery for the kind of sexual abuse that America committed in her history? The answer is stay righteous and be judged as the righteous. Stay wicked and be judged and counted among the wicked. And so I continue, behold, the wrath of the Lord burns as a fire pit Upon this idolatrous nation, all my fury burns. The wrath of the Lord consumes the mountains of Babylon. They will all crumble and fall. They will burn up even the mountains with their missiles, and the whole landscape will go up in flames. What I wrote here is the prophecy that the Lord showed me in December 2021. It is called the fire pit. Um, I will just take a moment and read a piece of that. So the scripture the Lord gave me here is Deuteronomy 29 and 23. For all that land will burn with brimstone and salt. You will not be able to sow in it nor bring forth, nor will any grass grow in it, like in the overflowing, in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, of Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his wrath and in his anger. And this prophecy was on December the 24th, 2021, where the Lord showed me myself walking across the landscape of America. So I was just walking and I don't know where I was and the whole country was on fire. The country was on fire in a panorama from the sky all the way down to the ground. In the sky, burning rocks, huge burning meteor-like rocks were falling upon this nation. And on the ground, the ground had been burned up by these falling rocks, assisted by missiles that came from Russia to the point where the ground looked like a charcoal barbecue pit. So you know when you light the coals and they're still black and you wait for the fire to spread across them until they have this glowing black look, very dangerous burning charcoal. That is how the earth of America looked. It was terribly burnt up. And I was walking across this landscape um, in the spirit, in a dream, I guess. And um, I had this terrible grief in my heart because the Lord was telling me, Celestial, all that you observe here, all that you see burning here is Russia. They will execute my wrath and my fury. So when the country is burning and the country is charred up, it's not because the Russians are such hateful, wicked, and evil people. The Lord says that he will put the wrath he feels into the heart of these people. When God fashions your enemy as a weapon against you, the hardness they bring against you, and likewise, later on, the mercy that they may show you is literally by God manipulating and ruling the hearts of those people like his puppets. He will raise up. I spoke of the idolatrous nation, a nation that departs from God's ways and how the Bible always says, if a nation departs from God, that nation will be turned into hell. And I have spoken on many videos and I have shared that when a nation is turned into hell, God is not only talking about the final end of that nation, when that nation will be punished either as a collective and also individually for collective and individual sin. He means that during the living lifetime of those people, their nation will literally come to resemble hell. And if there's one thing hell is known for, it is fire. I continue. The tall towers will be burned up for my vengeance and America's oil resources will run dry. 
America will not even be able to purchase basic commodities. It will not have the money or the forex ability to buy what it needs for its people. It will be hungry. It will be broke. Babylon shall be ashamed for her fornication and adulteries she has committed, the overflowing sin she has done until the land is sick with it. The whole land is sick with her sin. The land has become consumed with fornication, consumed with lust, consumed with murder and the shedding of blood. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. That line is from Isaiah chapter one, where God is dis dis describing the idolatrous nation. You can read that in Isaiah chapter one. The land is immoral and the land is defiled, says the Lord. So I often notice on the master's voice that people come to the comment section. I see them occasionally and they say, why are you speaking about America as a land of sin? Have you seen the sin that the Vatican has committed? Have you seen how much sin they've done, the Pope and everyone else? And while I am quiet, for there is no need for me to answer anyone anything, I often wonder if people truly understand in this country where we live. On the Master's Voice, I've shared such prophecies as blood to drink, where God shows that not only are children aborted here, but most of you have no idea where those children go. You have no idea why this land is so thirsty for infant blood, because people are eating, consuming those children. I didn't ask God to see these things, but I have no problem with the fact that he has called me and that he is genuinely speaking to me, sharing his heart and showing me the things that trouble him. He's not showing me revival and how this land is going to be so magical and so amazing and such a superpower. He shows me basically that someone is walking through America, flicking off the lights because the party is over. People have no idea what their children get up to here. You have no idea that young people today are taking advantage of the technology that mostly Satan has built up and that they decide that since they're fornicating anyway, they might as well fornicate for money. So they're sleeping with their boyfriend, Todd, that you know of, but you have no idea that your little 16 year old has a camera set up in her room and that she and Todd are fornicating live on camera using some app that I'm sure if you're a parent, you can find out about it in 12 seconds after you get off this video. And that people, strangers, pay money to view your child and her boyfriend, and that they are making coin and making bank, as the kids say. And because Todd is 18 years old and over, he's actually able to withdraw the money that they get from that app. Most people have no idea of what is going on here. But the Lord is making sure through channels like this and other true messengers who are speaking that the details will be shared so that when things happen here, no one can say, but we are innocent. And why has this fallen upon us? I continued, therefore into this land of serpents, I send fire and Russia will burn this country until the cities are wasted. She will deplete the people until there are no souls left here to them. Og of Bashan. Read it to them. As the giant was struck in war until there were no souls left to him, so shall the flag of America come down. They will be struck in a battle with the kings of the far east until there are no souls left to them. Shackles will be placed on their feet, chains around their necks, ties on their hands, male and female, young and old, will they go weeping into captivity naked as the day they were born. I've spoken often about this. I just mentioned about the sexual slavery, but with Og of Bashan, it's a curious story. Og of Bashan is one of the giants that was still remaining in the land when Joshua and the people of God came through, Israel came through. And it says of Og of Bashan in Deuteronomy chapter three, that Israel attacked Og until there were none left to him. So Og of Bashan was one of the few groups that Israel actually managed to eradicate and kill. If you read the book of Judges, you will find that sometimes Israel simply got tired of fighting. They wanted to grow their corn and drink the, drink the wine from the vineyard. And so they, as time went on, they didn't fulfill 
the word that God gave them through Moses, which is that you will utterly slay these nations because if you live among them, they will be a snare to you. They will trap your sons and daughters into sin. Og of Bashan was one of those that Israel did not suffer to live alive. And for a good reason, because Og came from the race of giants. The Bible says that they were attacked until none were left to them. And God is saying that Russia and the kings of the East, I am speaking of nations like China and North Korea and Taiwan that will come here in tandem to fight this country, they will attack America until it's almost as if there's nobody here. And they will take quite a few people into captivity, but God knows what he will do with his righteous. The Lord said, I sent a man among you, a prophet, my holy messenger, to tell you the truth. Then you will know that the word of God was among you, but you hated my messenger and you hated my truth until I destroyed you. I will pour out all my fury here for every child that was killed and for every life that was cut short and died screaming accusations against me. And the Lord said the accusations, God, where are you? What have I done? Why must I die like this? So I was speaking about how people think that it's just certain countries that are committing atrocities and they have no idea that on the master's voice, I have prophecies like altars where I actually got to see in a vision, a live human sacrifice of a woman who had been raped so much that she was bleeding both from the front and the back. And the people who had done this to her were waiting for her to crawl up on a huge granite altar so that they could take her life and complete whatever ritual they were doing. These are the things that happen here. But because it's not on CNN, people think that America's hands are clean. The Lord says that for everybody who died in terror, everybody who was chained up in darkness, awaiting a death that they did not deserve, he will pour out boiling lava on the land of America and he will blot out the abominations of the Chaldeans. He says, then you will know the Lord spoke to us and the Lord did warn us. The Lord sent men to us, but we stoned the prophets and we hated the word of the Lord. You will tell your story on all the distant shores of the world. So the Lord has spoken to me of two men. One of them is Pastor David Wilkerson, and one of them is Pastor Dimitri Dudeman. And both of these men told America that in the eyes of God, she is the land of Babylon. But even though Pastor Wilkerson was a man who was from this nation, he was a born son of America, and he was a pastor of such high standing, such a righteous man. When he brought out his prophecy entitled The Vision in 1973, where he spoke about all the things that God said this nation will become, almost all of which have been fulfilled, except the part where he said that he saw a thousand fires burning in America, and that part has not yet come to pass. He was scorned and he was very strongly rejected by the ecumenical community of the United States. It was even worse for Pastor Dudeman. He was accepted in some circles, but whenever he would touch upon the issue that America is Babylon, mystery Babylon, he was barely received. America holds this belief, which I will not delve into too deeply because I've already addressed it over a year ago, that they can't be Babylon because they don't meet the markers. But I will then read from one of the prophecies the Lord instructed me to read on camera, which is called a brass forehead. And I will read out the Lord's own words in a message to this nation. Please excuse me. I read from the message that the Lord gave me on May 12, 2021, entitled A Brass Forehead. I'll just read a piece of it. Say to the land of America, you are Babylon. You are the land of Shinar. You are the land of Chaldea, the Chaldees, the Babylonian pride and joy. You are the harlot, the, mis the mistress of the beast. I have known you of old and you have a brass forehead. Sit up. He's talking to me, sit up and say to her, you have a brass forehead, brass forehead, brass forehead. Tap your own head as you do this and say, brass forehead, you America are the harlot of revelation and you have a brass forehead. 
And so I woke up that morning and I had had a dream and it was one of those real life dreams that just, you know, sometimes I'm coming out of those dreams and I'm so urgently coming out of the dream that I, I'm jolted out of it into real life. And I could not remember. And I was asking the Lord to please return the dream to me. And this instead was the, was the answer he gave me. And he told me to tap my forehead right here and say, America, you are mystery Babylon. You are the harlot in the book of Revelation. You have a brass forehead. And the Lord has spoken often of this hardened plate that is inside people, such that when they hear the Lord speaking, then they say, but it is not the Lord. It is just you. And when they hear the messages of the Lord, then they say, but it is not us. We have not done this. We have not performed these things. Or they will say, other people have the same type of sin we have. Why is God always talking about us? People said, I'm not there. So I did not, I do not know what people said to the natural son of America, Pastor David Wilkerson. And that I do not know what they said to the immigrant son of America, Pastor Dimitri Dudeman. But here I am saying the same things that this is mystery Babylon and the punishment that God will pour out on her. So I am in this line of messengers that the father has sent to say these things. But the only difference is that as I observe things that no one would dare to say to an old man with white head in the pastoral office, they have no trouble saying to me. And so the Lord continued and he said that this nation will know that he sent prophets, but that they stoned the prophets and that they also hated to hear God's message. He says, you will tell your story on all the distant islands and shores of the world. And this is what you will say. We were America. We were the Chaldeans. We were Assyria. We were Egypt from times past. But we sinned against the Lord. We rebelled. We hated instruction and we despised his ways. We said, we will do differently. We will do what is in our heart. We will go after other gods. We will depart from the well of fresh water and we will drink from polluted pools. We will sin and we will revel and we will be our own gods. For this, we were captured. We were put in chains. We were made to work abroad in distant countries, in foreign fields for different masters. We were scattered everywhere. And that is why we are here lamenting among you today. For the sins of our forefathers, and even for our own sin, has this been done to us. We have sinned. The Lord has done it. He has struck us a blow we can never recover from. It is his doing, and we cannot refuse it. I read all these things in your hearing. You are the witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. And so I have shared... And I wrote down the things that the Lord brought to my remembrance. One of the prophecies is called Isaiah 13, Russia and War. It's a very recent prophecy. And in that message, basically, the Lord said that this very wall that America was championing a few years ago and the immigration procedures that are always raging in the news and in um the popular discussion spaces, if you're tuned into that. The Lord said that this very wall will stop Americans from escaping from their punishment and that people will be jumping over that wall at night. So in, in the vision that I saw in this Isaiah 13, Russia and war prophecy, I saw people trying to lift their children over the shorter and easier to navigate parts of the immigration fence into Mexico. And I saw in one vision that you had to pay the Mexicans. So um, you would pay the Mexicans and they were waiting on the other side of the fence, a little bit away from, you know, where the fence is. And they were waiting in the darkness. And if you managed to cross and you had money, then these guys in pickup trucks would carry you further into Mexico when it was safer. And then I also saw in another vision, American parents, dads and moms, 
crying in the homes of the people in Mexico. And uh, crying is a polite word for it. They were actually wailing. They were crying from the very depths of their souls. In fact, they were crying so much that many of the children I saw who had made it across with their parents were in utter and total stunned silence and shock because in all their lives, their teenage lives or their nine-year-old lives or their little three-year-old lives, they had never seen their parents express this much devastated emotion. So the children were stunned. And I saw that the older Mexicans didn't really have time for it because I guess by the time you're old, you've seen so much that you're just not moved. They took the children off and went to find clean clothes for them and went to make dinner and food and, and, you know, just take care of the children. But it was the younger Mexicans. It was the, maybe the 19 year olds and the people in their thirties who sat with Americans and tried to comfort them and try to show them kindness and understanding and comfort them. But I saw that they could not be comforted, especially the women. They could not be comforted for what they had lived to see happen to their nation. And another thing the Lord said in, um, I cannot remember the prophecy, but he said that the nations will flee. This was in 2015. I received this. He said that America will flee to all nations. And I saw different scenes happening here. So some devastating things happening here. And there was a mad dash for the airports. And I saw that America tightened the security so much that if you were American as in naturalized or citizen or whatever, you could not get out. You were counted as an American citizen and you could not leave the country. You could stay here. Only the people who have lived here maybe 20, 30 years, been happy with their green card, never naturalized. They still had their passports from Ghana and their passports from the Czech Republic and France, especially. I saw that people from France here had no problem with leaving their entire life savings, leaving their property, cars, and everything else of value. And they hit the road in no time. In that vision, the Lord showed me a very wealthy woman. She was wearing all white as in totally nice white pants suit and one of those rich people capes and she was pulling white luggage and she went through and she did not look back all the people that i saw in that vision with the rich lady who was returning back to france her native land did not look back but in the other scenes that i saw first in 2015 i think the vision is called the fall of america it's on the master's voice you can find it there by using the search box in that i saw there was terrible wailing and terrible tussles at the airport. People were trying to flee, but every person who either was naturalized could not flee. And I also saw that people with citizen children. So you've come here from Burkina Faso and you married an American and you have these half Burkina, half American babies and their citizens. I saw that people could not take their children and there were bitter choices to be made because it was next to impossible for parents to leave their children here. The citizen children could not be left here and the government knew that. And that is why when they implemented that rule, many parents were forced to stay here with their children. There could be no fleeing because you can't leave a five-year-old and a seven-year-old in the care of your 19-year-old child. That is not going to work, not in this place. No way those kids will be able to take care of themselves. And so the dragnet closed because of these things that the Lord was showing me and everybody was watching it on international TV. So understand when I'm speaking here, I'm, I'm not speaking for any kind of, I don't know, any kind of end result, except that these things have been poured into me, as I said in the beginning, and they absolutely must be poured out. The entire world was watching and the world could not comprehend how it was in the first place that Russia, I mean, that America had no idea that Russia had been here for their R Russians here. I have shared this in so many prop, um, prophecies since 2019. And these prophecies are from 2014, 2019. You're only hearing them from 2019 because that's when the Lord told me, make a public space and put them up. And then in 2020, he told me, make a channel and put them up. So this is Celestial with the master's voice. There are other messages that I have to put up, very strong messages. I have God is strongly warning against the practice of sin. God is warning against people who, in the book of Hebrews, the Lord says, or Apostle Paul is speaking in the Lord's authority, and he says that you have not yet wrestled 
against sin to the shedding of your blood. And the reason that that man said that is because he is saying boldly that there's only one of us who withstood sin perfectly, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is also letting us know that there is only one person who shed blood, not to cover his own sin, for he had none, but he wrestled against the presence of sin in man to the point of shedding his blood for the remission of man's collective sin. And so Apostle Paul is saying sharply here to all who are alive in this dispensation and know that God is not playing around. Nobody has ever asked you to resist sin until blood flowed from you. No blood has ever come out of the pores of your body as you wrestled in any garden of Gethsemane as the weight of the world's sin was put upon you, the sin sacrifice for all men. So if you know that you have not been forced to wrestle until you bled, then what will you do with the eternal and perfect sacrifice of one who bled for you? Will you crucify him anew by continue to live after the devil? For the Bible says that all who do sin are of the devil because he sinned from the beginning. Satan, the first sinner, even before Cain struck his brother Abel. Will you continue to live in the paths of wickedness after blood has been shed to take that load away from you? so that you may be counted righteous, so that you may be counted not only righteous, but worthy to escape these things. This is what Apostle Paul is saying. The prophecies that I'm receiving are falling like hammer blows, and it is only because of time that I'm not able to bring them out as speedily as I ordinarily would. But I am warning from the Lord that these lifestyles that do not please the Father, they are, they are building up a weight and a storyline against us. We may not think about it now. We live in such a permissive time. Anything is okay. But understand that God doesn't keep his records here on earth. He may send messengers to speak to his people. But the records are kept in a place that your eyes and my eyes can't look. Except that the person who is keeping the records is letting me look. So that I can warn others that I am seeing what the records are saying. If you do not want to be counted under the negative part of the records, then come out of Mystery Babylon and be separate from her whorishness and her fornications, or God will simply bring the outcome to your door and you won't be able to say anything about it. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for being with me. Longer video than usual, but I did say that this was something that was extremely intricate and complicated and I need to bring it out so that people can be able to vet this word for themselves and see that no man is able to look at these things and bring them up out of their belly. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ who will reveal these details so that when the time comes, you can know he is the one who spoke it. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you to all of you who support the work that I'm doing here for the Lord. May God bless you. I am thankful and may the Lord replace it and increase it and cause you to have even more abundance so that you can do his work wherever he is calling you to do it. Until I see you again, bless you and goodbye.